Okay, hello again, everybody. We're going to do another optimization problem. Uh, you can read it right there. It's a maximum area. Um, so it's saying we have a rectangle bounded by the x-axis in the semicircle. So uh, first of all, sem as circle at the origin, as you remember, a circle whose center is at the origin is this. So if you compare this equation, this would mean if you solve for y, you're going to get a, let's just do it quickly, you're going to get the square root of r squared minus x squared. But remember, when you square up both sides, you get a plus or minus. So when they're talking about this graph and they don't have the minus part, that would mean it's the top part of the circle. So if you compare those two, this is a semicircle, the top half of a semicircle, whose radius is 5. So it would look like this. So that's 5 comma 0 right here. This is 0 comma 5 right here. Um, so they're saying there's a rectangle here that's bounded by the x-axis, which means it's base will be on the x-axis, and the top of it is bounded by the circle. So this rectangle will look like this. So what would what length and width would the rectangle have so its area is a maximum? So that's translating what the question is asking. Now let's do what we know how to do with optimization. So we need to come up with a primary equation. The primary equation is very simple. It's look for that word maximum and figure out what it's referring to, and it's referring to area. So there's no question area is the primary equation. Now, area of what? The rectangle. So Let's call this y and I'm going to call this x right here, half the rectangle. It just it seems to make more sense to me than making the whole length x. It doesn't matter how you do it, uh, but if you do do it this way, you know the area would be 2xy. I just think based off the diagram and how it's oriented, that would be the way to go. So we do have uh, two independent variables here. So we need a secondary equation. And the secondary equation would be anything that relates x and y in this situation. And it's right out there for you. So the secondary equation is y equals the equation of this semicircle. Um, so this problem looked kind of, I don't know, confusing maybe at the beginning, but we're there. That's it. Once you have the primary and secondary equation, now it just becomes a min-max problem. You just put these uh, two equations together and find the min or max. So I'm going to plug the secondary equation into the primary equation to get my new primary equation, which would now be a equals 2x times the root of 25 minus x squared. Um, so this doesn't look um, too much fun, but we will have to find the min or max of this. So we will have to take the derivative. So here we go. 2 is my constant that I'm going to ignore. So this is a product rule. So first times the derivative of the second, which would be 1 half 25 minus x squared to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2x. So that's first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is 1, so that's nice at least. Um, 
I'm going to quickly clean it up a little bit. Negative 2x times 1 half x is negative x squared. So that cleans up pretty nicely. And I realize I forgot my 1 half here. I'm going to put it in right there. Um, so now I'm going to factor out my 25 minus x squared to the one half or to the negative one half. So I'll have two times 25 minus x squared to the negative one half times negative. Now we left with negative x squared. This whole thing was canceled, was factored out. Plus this would be 25 minus x squared to the positive. 1. So my derivative would be 2 times negative 2x squared plus 25 all over the square root of 25 minus x squared. So the whole purpose, remember, of doing this is I, we're trying to find the min or max. So we had to find the critical numbers. The only way to find critical numbers is to find out where the derivative is zero or undefined. So first of all, let's look at the bottom critical numbers. The bottom, x would be plus or minus 5. That would make the um, derivative undefined. So those are critical numbers. But if you look up here, the feasible domain, as they call it, if x is 5, that would put you out here. And then you would not have any height for the, the uh, rectangle. If x was 5, that would be this length for the rectangle. Um, so there be you couldn't, the top half of the rectangle would be on these corner so it wouldn't be a rectangle anymore it would be a little line segment so we can eliminate those answers right away because it's, they're not part of the domain of the problem so we're going to just worry about where the top is zero so negative 2x squared plus 25 equals zero and when you solve that you'll get x equals plus or minus and I'm going to ignore the minus right away because I know x can, is not going to be negative even though maybe you could say, yes, it could be negative. It could be, we could be referring it to this. So yeah, that kind of makes sense. But I'm only going to worry about the positive one because I uh, established that X was positive over here. So it's going to be the root of 25 over 2. Um, so I'm going to do a quick check on if this is a maximum. And I would use the, not the second derivative test, because the second derivative is hard. I would use the first derivative test. Um, so one thing we know is the root 25 over 2 is, well, 24 over 2 is 12, right? So this is between 3 and 4. So... I'm going to test 0 because I know that's not a critical number. And I'm going to test something really big. Except I can't go past, oops, I can't go past 5, can I? That's a critical number. I'm going to go a prime of 4. Again, this is the square root of 12-ish, so... Uh, 4 is on the other side of it. So a prime of 0 is going to be, it's going to be positive over positive, which is positive. Uh, if you plug in 4, the bottom is going to be positive. Negative 2 times 4 squared is negative 32 plus 25, which is negative. So I did that quickly, but that's enough to show that this will produce a maximum. So I found it. Uh, 
The question, though, is to find the dimensions of the rectangle, I believe. And it says, what length and width should the rectangle have? So my length should be, I found x was root 25 over 2. But that's only, according to my rectangle, how I drew it, that's only half of the length. So it's going to be 2, root 25 over 2. And y would be whatever I get for y when I plug that in. I'm going to do that quickly. Hopefully I do it right. y would be the square root of 25 minus x squared. If you square this, you're going to get 4 times 25 over 2. Because the square will just eliminate the square root. So I'm getting y equals the square root of 25 minus, uh, that was 25 over 2, it cancels with the 4, so it would be 2 times 25, which would be 50. So, something went wrong here. And I know why something went wrong here. Sorry about that. You saw, you see my mistake, um, which happens. So that this will happen. Um, something just didn't make sense. So I had to think about it. Maybe hopefully when you're watching this, you see what I did. So I'm going to say this is makes no sense. Why cannot be that number? Because why can't you can't take the square root of a negative? Uh, so I was thinking about what went wrong here. And if you, hopefully you noticed, I plugged in this for x. But that's not x. That's 2 times x. So I'm going to redo it right here. So y equals the root 25. And this is actually going to be a little bit easier. Minus x is this. So root 25 over 2 squared, which is just 25 over 2. So this would be y equals the square root of, that's going to be 50 over 2 minus 25 over 2. So that's y. So my dimensions would be 2 root 25 over 2. Again, it's 2 because I'm, I need the entire length of the base times the height, which is root 25 over 2. And that would be it.